In this demonstration, you'll see a preliminary version of Mimir, a tool being developed at UB to help you manage incomplete information. The main Mimir interface is on the left. Mimir uses JDBC to connect to existing database infrastructures. We're currently connected to a SQLite database named uidemo.db. To start, let's see what I mean by incomplete information. Imagine an analyst trying to develop a promotional offer. The analyst goes to her friendly data swamp and recovers the results of product polls her company has performed in the past. You can see some examples of data from these polls over here. Ratings1.csv is a toy example of data with some typos, while Ratings2 has a schema that does not match that of Ratings1. For these toy examples, these are easy problems to solve, but scale the issues up and suddenly you've got hours wasted on cleaning tasks that could easily be automated. Let's start by uploading this data using Mimir's easy-to-use CSV uploader. If we look at the contents of Ratings 1, you'll note that all of the values here are strings. This is because CSV doesn't include type information. Let's fix that. We can create what's called a type inference lens that assigns types to each column. A lens is a data processing component that requires as little configuration as we can get away with. Instead of asking the user for configuration details, the lens instead makes best effort guesses. You'll note that each of the results has now turned red. This indicates that each of these result values is based on a guess. As you can see here, the typo A3 has been replaced by a null because it can't be coerced to the floating point number that the rating column is expecting. Let's fix that too. We have a lens that allows us to interpolate missing values using a tree-based classifier. The classifier is trained on the remaining rows of the table and is used to make a best effort guess as to what missing values should look like. In this case, the system has guessed four. Of course, this might be wrong. So we would like to give the user a way of understanding why they're seeing the result that they're seeing. Any red or uncertain value in Mimir can be clicked on. By clicking on it, the system will give you statistics about that value and its uncertainty as well as a set of human readable explanations for why the value is uncertain. In this case, the value A3 was replaced by a null, and the system had a best guess estimate about the value to replace it. Let's try the same thing for ratings 2. Again, we have strings and we need to assign them types. This time, we'd like to combine the information from ratings 1 and ratings 2. Unfortunately, their schema mismatch means that we can't just combine them through a union. Instead, we'll use a schema matching lens that allows us to automatically cast the schema of ratings 2 to the schema of ratings 1. As you can see, the schema now matches the schema of ratings 1. We can now combine these two data sets and receive all of the data. You'll note that these results may not be entirely correct. But again, we have the ability to understand why the results are uncertain. To illustrate 
the next step in the process, we might want to combine the ratings information with original product data. We can do this using a simple join. You'll note that there are some results here that are once again in black. These results are certain. You'll note that some rows are highlighted now as well. This indicates that these rows may not actually be present in the result set. As a consequence of PID and ID uh, being joined together, we're not sure whether each of these rows will actually be present. But once again, the user can click to understand why they are uncertain. This has been a demonstration of the Mimir system being developed at UB. These results are still preliminary, and we are still working on the interface, but I hope this has given you a good idea of what we will eventually be capable of.